Hey, welcome guys. I'm going to explain the concept of refresh rate, um, which is a technology used in TVs, uh, computer monitors, even gaming cell phones. So we'll be focusing primarily on how it works, the basics of it. So it applies to the computer monitors, whatever. But then we'll focus on how it specializes to TVs later on in the video. Things will get slightly complicated, but if you follow along, I'll, I'll dumb it down a lot for you guys and draw out the concept of it. So before we continue any further, um, you have to understand what frames per second is, or FPS for short. It, it is crucial to understand it, to understand what we're going to talk about here. I have another video explaining and showing what frames per second is. Within the first two or three minutes of that video, you should get the idea very quickly. Okay, So assuming that you understand frames per second, which is crucial, let's continue on. So refresh rate is basically, you know, you'll see it when you're buying a TV, for example, by HZ. Um, which stands for Hertz. It's the frequency of how fast the image will refresh on the TV per a second. So in North America, the standard is 60. In other countries outside of North America, I think it averages about 50-ish. In Hollywood, for example, they record movies in 24 frames a second. What that basically means is that it's not a consistently smooth video. The video is recording the picture and taking pictures 24 times a second and then you it plays back 24 times a second tv channels tend to do 30 frames a second tv cho shows we'll focus on first they're recorded at 30 frames a second but your tv is refreshing at a base of 60. this is the standard for high definition tvs uh this is the lowest you can usually get so how does it match how does a 30 match this well what happens is that TVs tend to say, okay, your content's playing back in 30, but I'm refreshing too fast. So each frame, I'm just going to double it to match 60. So there's 30 frames a second. I'm going to double each one to make it into 60. Problem is Hollywood records theirs in 24 and 24 is not a good divisible of 60. So what happens is they use something like video pull down, which is done by three by two. So what that basically means for video pull down is that they're gonna play one frame three times, then the next frame twice, then the next frame three times, then the next frame twice, until it divides into 60. So that's how that works there. So the problem with this, with the, the pull down thing, is that the movie will look slightly choppy because it's flipping between two and three. It's not gonna look horrible, it's just, it'll look slightly choppier than when you're watching regular TV, like a a baseball game, for example. A lot of new TVs, though, can bypass this problem. Uh, what happens is newer TVs, they're designed at 60 frames a second, but if they find out you're playing a Blu-ray through an HDMI and the source is 24 frames a second, the TV will lower its refresh rate to 24 hertz to match this. Same concept here. If you have a K HD cable box, it'll reduce the refresh rate to 30 if there's no content that plays at 60 frames a second, why would I ever want to buy a TV at 120 hertz refresh rate? I mean, to, to jump from 60 to 120, you have to pay a lot more money, like hundreds of dollars more. Why would I ever do that? It doesn't make any sense. Well, there's some TV magic behind all this, but let's go into this concept first. The basic concept first, if you turn off any of the TV magic that we'll be talking about after, this works better here. So 24 frames a second movies goes into 125 times, right? It's a good divisible here. So what happens is each frame for a movie will play five times. Same concept with 30. 30 works very well with 120. It's a good divisible. So it'll play each frame four times. So nothing really changes here for TV shows as much because it's still a good solid divisible. But movies will look slightly smoother on 120 hertz refresh rate because it's not having to flip. It's always playing each frame five times consistently. So now I'm going to explain where that TV magic happens with the 120 hertz refresh rate TV. Let's pretend you're watching some sort of uh, action sequence, a car chase, for example. And you have a car zooming past the camera and the content you're watching on the TV. So in the first frame, <clears throat> the, the car will start here on the left. And on the second frame, it'll jump to there. So this is the first frame. This is frame number two. This is blank. We don't care about the middle yet. Just ignore the middle. In the first frame, 
it'll be on the far left. And on the second frame, it jumps all the way to the right. It happens so fast with the frames per second that the video is recorded and it's too slow to figure out what happened in between. So some TV manufacturers, what they thought was like, hey, how do we make this smoother, better for the user? How can we make them buy our TV? A lot of them came up with their own processor type uh, and their own uh, software algorithm. They're not really smart TVs. They don't have to be smart. They don't have apps, but they're smart enough to figure out, well, let's make something here happen. Even though it didn't happen in the movie, really, it, 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 it was never happening in the movie. We're going to make it up. So I know the, t the car was here and it ended up there. So it must have been in the middle. So the TV is going to create this on its own, right? This never happened in the movie. It was never in the middle of the scene, but the TV will create it. It'll make up a frame that doesn't exist. So frame one, frame two, well, it's going to make like frame 1.5 or frame 1B or whatever you want to call it, but something in between. Now you might be thinking, wow, that's, that's fantastic. That's amazing. Well, it really depends. There's, there's, there's a lot of catches here. So I'm going to start with the first one. The first one is, let's pretend that this scene happens so fast, it's, it's like, it's kind of almost like a blur when it goes across the screen. But when it creates this, the problem is, because it happens so fast going across the screen, it tries to make this, this scene, the car will look slightly blurry. The reason being is because the TV is trying to make up these made up frames on the fly. It, it's not able to predict in the future, it's trying to do it right there on the spot, right? So it's trying to make up all these details, but if it's too fast of moving content, it's going to look slightly blur blurred. You're not going to lose a lot of quality, but you will notice it's slightly blurred. The other catch is if you're a really hardcore gamer on a console and you think, wow, this is going to make my gaming so much smoother. Sure, it will. But if you're a hardcore gamer, you'll have a bit of latency. The reason, again, it's same concept. If this thing is happening so fast. The TV is working so hard. Is trying to do this on the fly. So you're gonna lose a slight response time there, right? Casual gamers won't care. Companies like Samsung, I'm not picking on them particularly, it's just, just an example because I know it's true. Samsung is notorious for saying, hey, we have clear motion rate, 240 hertz. And you're probably thinking, wow, they can create an image here and here in between even more than this, this one alone. But what I learned with Samsung in this example, take their number divided by two. It's actually 120. They're not really lying, but they're not telling the whole truth. And this is not just Samsung now. I'm, I'm picking on all TV companies that might do this practice. Even LG does this too, for example. Even though I think they're a great company. What they'll do is they'll have this, this, and this. Still the same. But when they advertise 240, they're like, well, we, we, we accomplished double. So what they're going to do is have this frame, then create a black empty frame, then this, then another black empty frame, and then this. So nothing's really showing here. It's the black empty frame, black empty frame, but they're still creating frames in between. It's just nothing's being projected. So it's not lying. It's just not telling the whole truth. Now, the biggest thing is you're probably wondering, well, I love smooth motion. You may or may not like it because a lot of people, they think it moves too smooth. They're like, it's too realistic. It looks like it's moving in fast forward mode when it's not. Hollywood, and especially a lot of the film industry, even a worldwide, hate smoother looking picture. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. They stick to 24 frames a second because that is like the cinematic feel. That is a cinematic standard. Tom Cruise made a passionate speech on the internet uh, to turn off video interpolation, which is basically this technology here. The, the made up frame is video interpolation. They said it causes a soap opera effect. This is a well-known term because soap operas have this smooth effect in a lot of the soap opera t shows, which I think is kind of a load of garbage because if, if TVs do a good job of it, which I've seen some look amazing, why not? Why not make the movie look better if you can't record at a higher frames per second? I'm sorry, but you should be recording your videos in 48 or 60 frames a second. Peter Jackson did it with The Hobbit. I think it was 40 or 48 frames a second that he played some versions of The Hobbit in theaters and Blu-ray. Um, I thought it was amazing. A lot of people thought it was amazing, but a lot of people hated it because they're like, well, no, it should have been real 24 frames a second. It doesn't look like a real movie. I personally like the, the faster, smoother rate. Um, video games, everyone pushes for 60 frames a second because it's smoother. Um, I push for 60 frames a second because it's smoother. In fact, my video right now is 60 frames a second. It's going to be a lot smoother than uh, the average 
I think this is really old school thinking, 24 frames a second. It's been around for so many decades now. It's 2019, why can't we just record in 60 frames? But people will bash me for saying that. There's a whole debatable topic. It, let's not get into it. We, we wouldn't need this technology or this technology here, this whole made up frame, if everyone just recorded in a higher frame rate. But that's just my personal opinion. The other question is, is it gonna work well? Because it doesn't work well in all TVs, as I mentioned here. How do you know yours is gonna be working well when you spend your hard earned money? Go to a TV store. Simple as that, you have to go in person because Samsung does this type of shady stuff, LG does it, I, I, a lot of, almost all TV manufacturers do it. How do you get around it? Go to the store, look at some of their TVs. So we'll stick with Samsung again. Clear motion rate works very well on their very expensive TVs, it looks fantastic. Clear motion rate on their low end TVs works horribly. So Samsung does have good TVs with clear motion rate. I'm not saying the technology is bad, it's just the way they implement it. So you have to go in store, see the TV in person, and judge. Is it worth getting the higher refresh rate here? Is it working well? Then also judge, do you like this technology? Do you like this video interpolation or not? Do you hate this soap opera effect? And that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to check out my social links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.